finding something like this, I suppose, is, is a real delight because it's like finding a window into an artist's early imaginative life. Here at the Art Gallery, we have the largest collection of artists' archives in Australia. We have over 300 personal archives from artists, and these often document the entire career of an artist, or indeed their entire life, from childhood up to their late work. But today, we're going to look at that fascinating period of childhood. I want to start with what's in this box. This is from the archive of the Sydney artist, Peter Kingston. Typically, in a biographical press volume such as this one from an artist, you would expect to find uh, exhibition, documentation, press reviews, photographs of their artworks, photographs of their fellow artists, of exhibitions, and things like that. But occasionally, you get a surprise and you'll find something like this very sweet sketchbook which has been glued in. This was done when Peter Kingston was five years old in 1948 and it's his first sketchbook. Finding something like this I suppose is, is a real delight because it's like finding a window into an artist's early imaginative life. And when Peter Kingston donated this book to the gallery, he came in and we looked through it together. And he was really quite moved to see this. He'd forgotten about it. But he said, looking at this, I can kind of see the pop influences, the colors that I eventually loved, and my use of things like stamps, which has been a constant in my art. And he said, you know, it's all back there when I was a five-year-old um, kid. Perhaps also the path to becoming an adult artist, the path to becoming a still life painter was there in Margaret Olley's archive as well. And that's the next one I would like to show you. And part of that archive was this shoebox. And at the bottom of this shoebox was a tiny little sketchbook. And this is it, it's very ephemeral. Um, it has written on it, my first sketchbook, age six. This was done in 1929. And I really love this object. It's very simple. It's line pencil drawings with color pencils and lead pencils and a few collage cut out um, colored papers. But what I love about it is the kind of freshness that it has. So you have these, this wonderful pipe here, in case we didn't know what it is, she's written the pipe. In case we didn't know what this kind of Miro sky and sun is, she's written God, sun and sky. And then we have this lovely image, which she has described as the lady's garden. Child psychologists tell us that children at this age, five and six, are often beginning to schematize in their work, to, to link things together, to show how the part relates to the whole. And I think it's happening here, but what you still get is this prioritization of the thing that is most loved and most important to her. So what we have is still this wonderful flower which dominates the whole composition and reaches up to the clouds. And of course, Margaret Olley remained all her life a flower painter. The next piece from an archive that I'd like to show you didn't come in a shoebox. It came very lovingly wrapped in tissue paper, and it was clearly something important to Frank Hinder. He was nine um, when he did this, and it came as part of a group of six sketchbooks. And this is one of those sketchbooks. We know its date, it's done in two days in October 1915. He's written very carefully the two dates. 
So Australia was at war for a year, and the previous year, sadly, his father, who was a doctor, died treating one of his patients. And when you open this sketchbook, you really open a door into the imaginative world of a child living with these two great things, the death of his father and a country in war. And the first page, um, not surprisingly, you have medical personnel like his dad. So you have doctors, nurses, the Red Cross tent, the ambulance, all in the context of warfare. And then the rest of the pages show a, a young boy's delight in engineering and the latest technology. And so we have ships, we have tanks, we have submarines, and here we have a battle from the tower with the wondrous Zeppelin flying high. Frank Hinder himself ended up serving in war in the following war, World War II. He served both in Australia and in New Guinea. And in our collections here at the Art Gallery, we have a number of works that he created during this time. And to some extent, they continue this interest rather than celebration of the mechanized, fast, new world that was ushered in at this time. The last sketchbook I'd like to show you comes from the artist Grace Cosington Smith, and it's inscribed on the front page to her mother from Gracie, and it's dated July the 14th, 1911, Bastille Day, 1911. This is a book by a very accomplished artist. This little watercolour, I think, illustrates that. It's an image of a young girl sitting on her bed, looking out to what she calls the ocean wild and wondering if it will bring anything for her. Now, a young adult of 19, I don't think, would ever make such a book today. The world has changed a great deal. Perhaps childhood innocence lasted longer in 1911 than it does today, or perhaps this is a record of the very particular circumstances of Grace Cosington Smith's life. And we do know that she came from a very loving, nurturing, slightly cloistered family home, and she never left that home. And this image of that child looking out of the windows reminds me of her later works because windows and doors are so important in those works. And in some sense, Grace Cosington Smith didn't venture out of those doors in a biographical sense, but in another more important sense, as an artist, she is such a testament to the power of the imagination. And she ventured further on those waters than most of us will ever dream of doing. So I've just pulled these four things out because they appeal to me. I could have chosen lots of other things. The archive is rich with these treasures. Perhaps my interpretation is fanciful. It's very individual, of course, but I've chosen them because they mean something to me. And I'm actually quite moved by these objects.